Today's ironic word is resent, from the Latin re, again, and sentire, to feel. The irony is that it used to mean the opposite of what it means today. How did this change in meaning come about, you ask? Well, as mentioned previously, the word in Latin literally means to feel twice, as if feeling twice intensifies the feeling. In Norman French, the word ressentir meant to be angry at, but after entering English, it broadened its meaning to feel passionately, whether positive or negative. So by Thomas Jefferson's day, it could mean either to hold in high esteem or to be indignant about an insult or injury. Later, the former meaning was lost, leaving only the latter meaning that we use today. This is by no means unusual in language and is technically known as semantic drift, when the meaning of a word changes randomly through time. The only thing special about this particular word is that it did a 180 degree flip in meaning. But wait, you say. If in Thomas Jefferson's day it had both opposite meanings, how did people tell them apart? That's a fair question, and the answer is that they dealt with it in much the same way that we deal with a word like anxious, which also has two opposite meanings. People listen for such clues as context and tone of voice. It may even depend on the person speaking. We can tell what is meant by a word like wicked by the age of the person using the word. And when you think about it, it had to be this way, since language never changes monolithically overnight. So in addition to being merely ironic, the word resent is a testament to the remarkable capacity of the human mind for communication and interpretation. The next time you hear someone worry that the language is degenerating and communication is in danger of breaking down, take this as a lesson.